Hello, my name is Sascha Preibisch and today I would like to explain how the resource owner password credentials flow in OAuth 2 works. Sometimes it's called just the password flow. So here are some highlights. The grant type is called password and um, this is the flow where a client has access to user credentials. So this is the only or flow where this is the case. And for that reason, it is important to remember that this flow should only be used with trusted clients because the user, of course, is sharing his username and his password with this client. Other than often believed, mobile apps are not trustworthy. So if you uh, look into the auth spec, you will find that um, mobile apps are considered public clients and by that they are not able to maintain a secret and they are potentially uh, vulnerable or more vulnerable to be hacked or misused than other types of clients. Of course I know that the uh, password flow is often used on mobile devices mainly for user convenience. Um, so the typical reason that I hear are the typical reasons that I hear are that uh, especially enterprise companies don't want to uh, have the user switch context. So they'd rather have a smooth user experience with no context change, which means the user always stays in his app. Um, and this is preferred over having a very secure user experience with a context change where the app opens a uh, internal browser window. I'll explain that a little uh, later. Um, this flow is not supported in OpenID Connect. I just want to, men to mention this because I have seen this question often. And uh, generally in OpenID Connect only flows are supported that leverage a response type which is not the case in the password flow. So a typical request is sent to the token endpoint using POST. The content type is um, form URL encoded and the client credentials are placed as base64 encoded string in the authorization header. This of course is only the case if the client is a confidential client. Alternatively, a client would place his client ID as client ID parameter uh, as an identifier in the request. So the uh, message body also includes the grant type password, a scope value, the username and the password that were collected of the current user. And the response of the server will include an access token, a refresh token, and then a granted scope, the token type, and oh, scope again. Uh, this would be expires in. So I want to talk a little bit more about the user experience because I think it's important to uh, really ask yourself if you want an app that is super smooth and super nice to use or if you want an app where the user when he logs in, which is really not often the case usually, um, is feels a little uh, less smooth experience maybe. So let's say you are a fan of the smooth user experience. You will have an app and the app will have a username and a password field and then typically a login button. So the user types in his username and his password and the app then sends those credentials to the authorization server. This is all nice, but potentially, depending on the device, since you are not in control of the user device, um, this app may be vulnerable, be hacked, maybe it's a root device, you never know what's going on. And these credentials may lead to a different app. Or another case would be that a user has downloaded not your app, but one that is very similar to yours and uh, the user mistakenly believes he's using the correct app and shares his credentials with this app. In addition, the developer has full access to the user credentials and uh, 
the other one that I mentioned are vulnerable apps. Apps may give access to other apps. So there's a lot that can happen on the mobile device. And uh, I know typical use cases are um, enterprises that an, a insurance company that builds an insurance app or a bank that builds a bank app. And they often support username password within embedded in their app. Uh, but you may want to reconsider that. So the alternative is to uh, choose a flow where the app um, sends, uh, creates a new context, so to say, and opens a internal browser window. So this is uh, on Android devices. This would be Chrome Custom Tabs, and on Safari would be Safari View Controller. These are like little browser windows. Um, and they will display a login screen that could be created by an authorization server itself. And the main advantage is that the device itself, no app, has access to the content of, these, uh, of this little window. So the username and password are securely exchanged between your app slash the uh, internal browser window with the authorization server. So neither your developers will have access to these credentials nor other apps. And the only difference between those two from a user point of view is that the user may be presented uh, you know, with an extra window which closes afterwards. And uh, this really doesn't happen too often depending on how you've implemented your app. So if you build your next app using the password flow, please consider using this option here on the right hand, right hand side rather than the one on the left hand side. And as a hackathon project, you could have your colleague try to hack your app and see how easy or difficult that is. Typical use cases would be log into a website or the other one not ideal, but still in use. An enterprise apps app collects user credentials to grant access to enterprise systems. So um, the alternative to this approach would be using the authorization code flow with Pixie. This has a small impact on the user experience, but it's may way more secure. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Please leave comments and subscribe if you liked it. I hope I covered this uh, flow um, good enough. If not, as I said, just leave a comment. Thank you.